This presentation today is a small part of an ongoing research project that I'm working on, which looks at the many meanings of Mina as an Italian popular music diva of the 1960s and 1970s. I'm interested in the various significances that fans, the music industry, the media and even Mina herself ascribe to this celebrity throughout her life. And then I'm interested in what this can tell us about Italian attitudes towards pop music, the role of women, ideas of stardom and celebrity, for example. However, whilst Mina's star status has been clearly established, the contribution made by cinema to the creation, reification and transmission of this status is often overlooked by biographers who trace Mina's rise to fame. But between 1959 and 1967, Mina was the star of 13 musical films that can be categorised as belonging to the musicarelli genre. These films had a clear commercial aim, that was to support the career and album sales of the pop music star who performed in the leading role. And the films then were aimed at an audience of giovani who were emerging as a social class in this period. So in this presentation, I'm going to explore the ways in which Mina's popular music star status was informed and shaped by her performances in these films. I'm focusing specifically on the characters Mina portrays and the songs she performs. So I want to illustrate some of the ways in which her star persona was shaped by both Italian music and film of the early 1960s, so exploring the broader significance of her status within pop music during this period. But perhaps we'd better start with an introduction of the star herself. So Anna Maria Mazzini, or Mina as she's more commonly known, is a prolific Italian pop singer who rose to fame in the, early, in the late 1950s and who continues to release albums to this day. And these albums continue to sell well and that demonstrates kind of her, her fan base in Italy. She was particularly dominant from the mid 60s to the mid 70s before retiring from TV in 1974 and from performing in public in 1978. Her popularity with Italian audiences was cemented during this dominant period by her continued appearances on Rai's Saturday night variety television shows of the 1960s. In fact, Italian TV of that period played a predominant role in making Mina a household name in Italy during the decade. But at the start of Mina's performing career at the end of the 1950s, it was not only television that contributed to the production of her status as star. Yes, she appeared as a guest performer on the popular TV programmes Il Musichiere and Canzonissima in 59, but her fame had already been established by them thanks to the written media and the music industry, who had cast her as a popular urlatrice, who sang rock and roll style numbers that would appeal to a large audience of young people. As an urlatrice, Mina is said to be the ragazzetta coi capelli corti, dal ritmo frenetico e con, con una voce superba. She represents una vera e propria rivelazione, intelligente, moderna, giovanissima, suscita un entusiasmo travolgente. At the start of her career then, Mina represented youth, innovation and modernity. And the popular music critic Leonardo Campus helps to contextualise the broader significance of Mina's characterisation as an orlatrice at the start of her career, because he explains that Gli urlatori, infatti, erano per loro stessa natura, natura uno dei simboli del nuovo che avanza nella musica e nella società, dell'energia, della trasgressione, del cambiamento, della giovinezza. As a result, many adults consideravano gli urlatori alla stregua di incivili veri e propri scostumati. Una questione di stili canori era traslato su un pieno di decenza, di generale decadenza dei costumi. But the period 1960-61 saw a change in Mina Starr's image that came about as a result of her being invited to perform at the Saremo festivals of those years. Now, Roberta Agostini has argued that the festival was and is, quote, the most representative showcase for mainstream Italian popular music and the stronghold of the authentic tradition of the Italian melodic song. 
festival songs, and thus we can extrapolate the canzonetta all'italiana in general, contained a, quote, national popular element, easily accessible and escapist, rooted in a pre-World War II musical past. To perform at the festival meant Mina had to embrace the more melodious and lyrical canzone all'italiana. This change in genre also necessitated a change in appearance, as you can see. Yet whilst the hairstyle and outfits demonstrate the turn towards tradition within Italian popular music, there's still an element of modernity and youth here in those, you know, the strapless dresses, the bouffant hairstyle. So even as a cantante all'italiana, Mina represents the, the new generation of young Italians of the late 50s and early 60s. The star image of Mina as urlatrice and cantante all'italiana feed into her Musicarelli film performances. Now, like we've already sort of said, these films had a deliberate commercial aim. Indeed, the name Musicarello recalls the Caroselli television adverts of the same period. Cecilia Brioni has in fact argued that, quote, the films were part of a promotional circuit, film, singer, song, for which every element of the circuit promoted the other two. The commercial aim of these films is also the element that is mostly emphasised by cinema critics. As far as the predominance of musical performances and the weakness of the plots are concerned, these films are criticised as lacking any cultural interest. Brioni then explains that these films were the first media product aimed at an audience of young people. So, as a genre, the Musicarelli developed at the end of the 50s and aimed to dare un volto ai Beniamini della radio, who were not yet involved in Italian television. Now, most of Mina's appearances belong to what can be called the first phase Musicarelli films, which Daniele Magni has categorised as those degli orratori. So, these are the films that I'm concentrating on first and foremost today, to explore their contribution to Mina's star status. My argument is that these films both draw from and contribute to Mina's star image in the early 1960s. The star image is, according to Richard Dyer, quote, made out of media texts that can be grouped together as promotion, publicity, films, and criticisms and commentaries. All these texts together generate the image which then has different meanings for different types of audiences, who then differ in terms of race, class, gender or nationality, for example. In the context of the Musicarelli films featuring Mina, her star image that is presented on screen draws on her pre-existing status as famous urlatrice and well-known and loved cantante all'italiana, both, both of which had been established then in the late 50s and early 60s by the media text generated by the recording industry, the radio, newspapers and magazines, Mina's albums, her interviews and also fan responses. But the films themselves also then become another media text that contributes to the construction of Mina's star image. Now, there are three specific strategies that are used in the films, which altogether draw on and simultaneously contribute to Mina's star image and thus status. Firstly, we see Mina as the established star, the orlatrice, the cantante, external to the film and the film's plot. But we also see Mina the star as a character in the films. Finally, we see Mina acting as a character within the films where, apparently, her pop star status is not at all part of the film's plot and characterisation. Mina the established star appears in the following films. Jukebox Urli d'Amore from 59, Appuntamento a Ischia and Sanremo la Grande Sfida from 1960, and Canzoni nel Mondo from 63. Given the constraints of time, I'm just going to take the first film as a case study here to illustrate the use of Mina, the established star in these films. So, Jukebox then opens with Mina performing the song Splish Splash. That's where the still's taken from. The performance is not integral to the plot of the film and rather illustrates the kinds of songs that will feature as records in the jukeboxes that feature in the film. The segment can therefore be identified as a very early instance of a music video. And Carol Vanalis has argued that, quote, music videos derive from the songs they set. The music comes first. The song is produced before the video is conceived. And the director normally designs images with the song as a guide. 
Moreover, the video must sell the song. It is therefore responsible to the song in the eyes of the artist and record company. The segment in Jukebox indeed functions to highlight the song and thus Mina as the artist and also to sell them both to the audience. Later in the film, Mina appears as the star performer at a nightclub that is popular with one of the main characters in the film. In the context though, she's the external star who comes to provide the background music in the club. But her performance is what is foregrounded. She sings Cintarella di Luna, so one of the, the hits of the time. Um, and the camera focuses on her for the entirety of the song. The staging is such that we're not even aware of the rest of the nightclub. Again, this is a music video for Mina. And what is foregrounded is her pre-existing star status as the young and modern Urlatrice, seen in her outfit as well as in her performing style. Broadly speaking then, for Mina's presence to work in these films, we have to already know of her star status and we have to already appreciate her as a star in her own right. In the context of the Musicarelli, the star image of Mina becomes a commercial tool that will advertise the films and attract audiences. As the external star attraction, Mina guarantees ticket sales. So the films are capitalising on her public persona as star to ensure success. But the films also function as star vehicles for Mina. By choosing her to be the external star, the films highlight her status and promote it even more. Being the star thus enhances Mina's star image even further. Mina's star image is also enhanced when she appears as the internal star within the Musicarelli films. We see this in particular in Urlatoria alla Spara from 1960 and Appuntamento in Riviera from 62. That latter film is the case study for now. So the film is in fact the story of Tony, okay? Tony's played by the singer Tony Renes, Tony Renes, sorry, who rises to fame at the San Remo Festival but must hide the fact he's married in order to ensure his continued success. In order to promote his songs, the recording company fabricates stories of Tony's relationships with high-profile actresses and singers. Enter Mina at the end of the film there. So she first appears in the film as an invited performer at an awards dinner, where Tony is to be presented with a disco d'oro for the success of his first single. Mina is Mina here. She's the external star invited to entertain the audience during a hiatus at the dinner yet she quickly becomes an integral character in the film. The newspapers declare she's going to marry Tony, despite only seeing him briefly from a distance at the ceremony. And this is a story that Mina in the film goes along with. We see her agreeing to the marriage with Tony's agent, explaining she's going to marry Tony for her own personal reasons. Prior to the wedding, she takes Tony to the beach as a publicity stunt, and instead of letting him, letting him explain that he won't marry her, he's already married, remember, she kisses him much to the delight of the hidden paparazzi who capture the moment. But we begin to guess at Mina's motivations for agreeing to this wedding. She receives a telephone call from a jealous boyfriend in Milan. And in fact, the film climaxes with Mina in a wedding dress set to marry Tony when finally her boyfriend swoops in to claim her as his own, leaving Tony free to announce he was married all along, a situation that his recording company are now willing to accept. You get a flavour of the, the, the kinds of narratives in these films there. Now in this film, I think we can argue that Mina is playing a version of herself. The Mina as star character draws on Mina's own personal life and her actual star image to enable audiences to read her performance and thus also the film. The twists and turns of the plot, together with our external knowledge of Mina's different relationships, you've got to remember here she was very famous for different relationships with different men during the early 1960s. So our knowledge of that underlines the kind of anti-traditionalist element of Mina's star image. In the film, she takes the lead in the relationships, and that's in the fictional relationship with Tony and the supposed actual relationship with the boyfriend, and engineers circumstances to get what she wants. But she's also the modern star, and Paola Valentini has argued that in this film, quote, it's the young Urlatrice who takes the stage and announces her presence to the world. When Mina agrees to marry Tony, she takes advantage of the media, controlling it and no longer victim to its gossip. Instead, she's a, a detached and ironic spectator to the manipulations. 
able to defend her apparent lack of scruples and well aware of her freedom and independence. Now the crossover between external star and internal character I think means that Valentini's reading here can be applied both to the character of Mina in the film but also to Mina the star outside the film who is able to detach herself, take advantage of the media and defend herself then. Finally, we have the films in which Mina plays a character. These roles on the surface have nothing to do with Mina's star status as a singer. In Madri Pericolosa from 1960, she's the aristocrat's daughter who wants to escape her family and marry her sweetheart who plays the saxophone in a band. In Ita di Boys della Canzone, also from 1960, she plays a university student studying nuclear physics. Just go with it. In Io bacio tu baci from 61, she's the daughter of the developer who wants to buy out the local bar where the young people go to perform and listen and dance to their music. And in Mina fuori la guardia, she, she plays Valeria, who hates Giovanni music, but falls in love with Tony Renis, not knowing that he's a famous singer. Yet Mina's status as singing sensation does inform all of these characters. Each one either possesses or discovers a passion and talent for singing. I suppose we might expect this, given that these are musicarelli movies after all that promote the songs and star, images, star image of the singers involved. But Mina's anti-traditional star image is also reinforced by these characters that she plays. In Madri Pericolosa, she's the daughter who goes against the wishes of her family when she marries her boyfriend. In I Teddy Boys, her songs help the Teddy Boys to receive recognition for their songs and musical talents and to win a contract to perform on national television, thus legitimising their modern music. Io bacio tu baci sees Mina's character playing with social conventions when she pretends she's pregnant to make her father not knock down the bar where her fiancé plays. And in Mina Fuori la Guardia, we see an anti-music Mina demonstrating the pull of modern music and the allure of the then contemporary Italian artist, which obviously included Mina herself. To fully understand the meaning of Mina's appearances in these Musicarelli films, the audience needs to be aware of Mina's star image outside of the films and of the meanings associated with it. This is arguably because Mina is first and foremost a pop music star. P. David Marshall explains that, quote, the celebrity of popular music is constructed from elements quite different from those that make up the film celebrity. These elements are related to the, the, to the technology of production and reception, the form of address that is peculiar to the singing of a song, the industrial and commodity configuration of the musical product, and the audience's collective and individual relationship to the music and the performer. Yet whilst these are certainly some of the elements that constitute Mina's star image, she was also a film star in the early 1960s and then a TV star throughout the 60s into the 70s. Her star image then is arguably intermedial. Now in their analysis of intermediality in theatre, Chapel and Kattenbelt speak of intermediality as the intersections created when, quote, art forms of theatre, opera and dance meet interact and integrate with the media of cinema, television, video and new technologies, creating profusions of texts, intertexts, intermedia and spaces in between. Intermediality then is a creative space that is generated when mediums come together. My argument here is that by identifying Mina as an intermedial star, we are able to identify new meanings in her star image and status that speak to the social and cultural changes taking place in Italy in the 1960s, and particularly the emergence of youth culture and music and the changing role of women in this period. This is ultimately what these musicarelli highlight, and what a knowledge of Mina's star image external to these films subsequently underlines.